So Gen5 is really um, a useful simulator, um, but there are also lots of other simulators out there. And the Gen5 community's viewpoint is not that Gen5 should be used for everything all the time, but that we want to try to work with these other simulators and make sure that there are interfaces such that um, we can easily talk to each other. Because I recognize, the Gen5 community recognizes that Gen5 is not the best tool in all cases. So one of these integrations is uh, Gen5 and SST. Um, so we're not going to do this, as I'll talk about SST for a minute. Um, so SST is the Structured Simulation Toolkit. Um, it is a parallel discrete event simulator. So Gem5 is a discrete event simulator, but we run in a single thread. SST is a parallel discrete event simulator that uh, is primarily developed at Sandia National Labs. And it's used a lot for doing really large scale simulations, a lot of like network level simulations in supercomputer sized uh, things. Um, the SST people, um, what they really tout as their big selling point is that they can scale their simulator up and run it on supercomputers. So um, we are working with SST and have been working with them for a while to try to create interfaces between Gem5 and SST. So uh, uh, SST is made up of a bunch of components in the system, um, and Gem5 can be used as one of those components in an SST system. So these slides go through how to get set up with this and how to run some examples, um, but as I said, we are not going to do that because um, I know you all are exhausted. Um, so one caveat when you're building Gem5 to use with SST or other simulators um, is you might need to build Gem5 as a library. So SST loads in components dynamically as libraries, and so this is a little bit different way to build Gem5. So instead of building Gem5.opt or Gem5.fast, this is building libgem5 underscore opt fast debug and then dot so. Note that it's dot dynelib if you're on Mac OS. And then annoyingly, this is something you're, you're going to have to look up every time. I know I do. You also have to compile it um, without TC malloc because SST doesn't know about TC malloc. Um, and this duplicate sources is another new required parameter that you have to add. Clearly, the developers who pushed some changes were not thinking about SST when they were pushing those changes. So this goes through uh, building Gem5 to be used with SST. Um, and then you need to build the SST component for Gem5. So this is another step. So um, I guess I'll say this. All of these simulator um, uh, the external simulator integrations, you can find all of the external simulator code in Gem5 EXT. So for instance, we're in, we're looking at SST. So the code here in Gem5 EXT SST, this code with the responder interface and the Gem5.cc, this is all SST code, which is used to bridge between um, SST Gem5, not the Gem5 code. So you need to build this code as well. That's what this is doing. And then you can just run SST um, and then run SST example.py. SST also uses Python to configure, so you end up doing this Python that's executing, that's loading at a dynamic library that's in C++ that's in, then executing Python, which is then probably executing Python. I don't know, it's Python all the way down. Um, but he, here are some examples um, to look at that. So um, a little bit about the um, integration here. So in SST, SST in this picture is the other simulation simulator system. SST has a bunch of components. And then Gem5 also has a bunch of sim, what, what we call sim objects. And so what we have created in Gem5 is essentially a bridge to go from a Gem5 sim object into um, to send and receive data from SST components. So in SST, Gem5 appears as a component, and then we have this bridge between the two. I think you wouldn't be surprised to find out that this bridge is implemented across Gem5's port interfaces. So you can take Gem5 ports 
and convert them into what SST uses, which is called simple mem. So SST's interface that looks like ports is called simple mem. Gem 5's is called ports, and you can convert um, from one to the other. And again, I'll just kind of point out where this code is. Um, so this is on the SST side with this SST responder. So you can send requests from Gem 5 into SST. SST will respond. That's what this is. And then um, the Gem 5 side is in source mem, nope, apologies, source SST. And then um, here are our bridges. So there's like an outgoing request bridge that you can connect to um, an SST uh, simple mem object. Any questions so far? So we talked about this. One thing that's quite confusing is since this is all these levels back and forth of Python and C++ between both SST that's doing this and Gem5 that's doing it, you end up having some actually like C++ code that has to call Gem5's Python libraries. And there's a bunch of stuff that you manually have to do to set up Gem5 in the background. Um, all this code can be found in, um, keep this open, in the ext sst Gem5 object. Um, so in this object, somewhere in here, there's like some calls from, so, this kind of sets up all of the Gem5 stuff, is if we execute these Python commands, and that's done from the Gem5 library. So I guess what I want you to take away with this, from this, is um, setting these things up is kind of complicated. If you need to do it, you can, and this is where you would look for it. So the other thing that gets kind of complicated is now both SST and Gem5 have two different event queues. So Gem5 has its own event queue, and SST has its event queue. Actually, SST has a, a bunch of distributed event queues. And then there's a clock between them. Um, and so essentially the way this, hap the way this works is since um, Gem5 is the subcomponent in SST, whenever S Gem5 will tell SST, hey, I have something I need to do at some particular time, will you wake me up? And then SST will call in and wake up Gem5 at that time, and then Gem5 will execute some number of things on its event queue, and then once it's ready to go on to the next clock tick, then it will tell SST, okay, I'm done with all the events at this clock tick, I need to be woken up again in the future. So then it calls back into SST to wake it up in the future. That's what this code is looking at. So yeah, we talked about this external simulator port here. Um, so right now, uh, the Gem5 SST integration, we only have this response port implemented. Excuse me. So Gem5 can send requests into SST, and SST can return responses, but the other way around, um, we haven't implemented yet. We have not implemented it so that SST can send requests to Gem5. Hoping that we have, yeah, okay. So Gem5 provides this outgoing request bridge in the SST responder interface. The Gem5 component is an SST component, which has uh, SST responders, and we translate packets. Um, so this also translates from the request type in Gem5 to the correct re request type in SST. So we have one implementation um, example in Gem5 that you can use that essentially allows you to have a Gem5 core talking to an SST cache and an SST memory. And it actually works such that you're going to have these cores running on um, different uh, processes. Um, SST uses MPI for parallelization, so you can get some parallelization out of this. Big caveat, parallelization doesn't work very well. There's almost no parallel speed up when you do it this way. Um, really big caveat with this is that um, SST does not support functional 
or atomic accesses. So if you're using Gem5 in SE mode, it just doesn't work with SST at all. Even in full system mode, if you're using devices that depend on vertio, which is implemented in Gem5, faking things using functional accesses, those won't work with SST either. So basically, the only thing that works with Gem5 and SST is if you have a full bare metal um, uh, system. So we have an example of like booting a, risk a very simple RISC-V um, system with uh, um, a memory mapped uh, root file system. So no disk, but a root file system that's memory mapped. Um, so that works, but so far we don't have anything more complicated. Um, my group, I don't have a slide on it. Yeah, that's what this is saying here, is this RISC-V full system. And then my group also is working on getting uh, GEM5 nodes. So you can run your entire node in GEM5 with um, cores, caches, memory controllers, and then have that talk to uh, another external remote memory, which is an SST. And you have multiple GEM5 nodes that are execute in executing in parallel, sharing a remote memory. So something that looks kind of like CXL. We're working on that now, and it should be upstreamed um, within the next couple of months. Let's see if there's anything else that I need to say here. Clearly, I did not make these slides, so. I think that's what I just said there. So a few other notes. Um, so again, there's multiple different Python environments going on. Um, you need to be careful with that. And then there's some documentation in, uh, ooh, that's an old link. Um, documentation in Gem5 EXT SST README, which talks about how to get all this set up. Okay, so let's go on to DRAM simulators. So there's a lot of um, other simulators out there, like DRAM Sim and DRAM Sys. Um, and Gem5 also integrates and plays nicely with these. Um, Again, Gem5 has this port interface, and so as long as we can get these DRAM simulators to understand Gem5's port interface, we can in integrate them pretty easily. And these two are, um, we've integrated them into Gem5. So as I said, yeah, ports are this useful interface uh, between other simulators. So why would you want to use an external simulator? So uh, uh, yeah, first note, I don't advise doing this. Um, I think the DRAM's, the Gem 5's DRAM model is plenty accurate um, for most research, but you might want to use an external DRAM simulator. So for instance, if you want to compare Gem 5's DRAM models to DRAM Sim or DRAM Sys, this is useful. So when we were developing the HBM2 model in Gem 5, we knew that uh, DRAM Sys had a good HBM2 model, and so we were doing side-by-side -side comparisons between DRAM Sys's model in our model, and so driving it with the same traffic from Gem5 was useful while we were doing that. Or, you know, maybe you've already mo um, modified some other simulator, already made modifications to DRAM Sim 3, and so you just want to use Gem5 to drive tra it, traffic to that modification that you've made. That'd be another good reason uh, to use these external simulators. Any questions there? Okay. So in the materials, I do have a code example of this, which I'm not going to go through, um, as I mentioned before. Um, so in both of these cases, what you're going to do is clone some external repo into Gem5 EXT, whatever directory we're in, uh, clone that external repo, build the external tool, and then integrate it with Gem5. So uh, DRAM sys. After you add the DRM sys repo, you can actually just build Gem5, and Gem5 will automatically pick it up and start using it. Um, and then using DRM sys, if you want details on how to use this, obviously go to um, Matthias's repo. Um, but you can configure it just like a regular uh, memory system, like the single channel memory or multi channel memory. It's integrated into the um, standard library. So all you have to do is um, import a DRM sysmem, 
and then point to the configuration that you want to use. Both of these simulators use these JSON or INI files for configuration, so you need to be careful with your paths to make sure you get your paths set up. There's a few options for DRMSYS, such as the configuration, the resource directory, which is where all the configurations live, and then this recordable, and DRMSYS can output a trace uh, from this. A couple notes in the implementation here. Uh, DRMSYS actually uses TLM 2.0 um, in its implementation, and then to do the integration between GEM5 and DRMSYS, we use GEM5's TLM 2.0 implementation. So GEM5 also has a bridge between ports and TLM, and that's what's used uh, here. Um, for those of you who don't know what TLM is, I think it stands for transaction level modeling. That would make sense. It is a transaction level protocol, and it models something. Um, and it's from the system C uh, specification. So if you run I, I, um, this little example from uh, the materials folder, you get this result out of uh, Gem5. So one thing to note is that um, the results from DRMSYS are just printed to the screen. There is no results in the stats from DRMSYS. The DRM stats are, don't exist. And it also outputs this database file, which is a trace of everything that went into uh, DRMSYS. And it probably has some other things that I'm not familiar with. Okay. Now DRAM sim. So I was writing these slides yesterday, and I started out by writing note: DRAM sim is DRAM sim three is not regularly tested. DRAM sim two is never tested. And then I started writing an example of how to use it. So in this case, uh, DRAM sim doesn't automatically build, but the README tells you this. So you clone the repo. That's a typo. You don't clone clone. You just clone uh, clone the repo build DRAM sim, and then Gem5 will find it um, automatically. This is also exposed in the standard library, so there's an example in um, materials that does this. Uh, so you can just import the DRAM sim three components. Uh, I think everything is single channel. So we've only impl implemented single channel in the standard library, but it sounds like um, you could implement multi-channel by having multiple single channel controllers. Um, so you can instantiate one of these single channels, and then you just look at the DRM sim configs that exist, choose which one you want to use, and then pass the size, and that's all you need to do. Um, big note here, turns out DRM sim does not work with 24.0. As I said, it wasn't tested, so therefore it doesn't work. Um, I tried to get it to work, and there are more than one bug that come up as you try to run it. So, oops. Um, so that example does not work contributing. So this slide deck is very long. It has exactly one page, which is this page. Um, so Gem5 does integrate with System C. There's actually two different Gem5 integrations with System C. You can either um, integrate System C components into Gem5 using the TLM bridge, like what we saw with DRM Sys, or you can take a system C model and actually compile it into Gem5. Uh, Gem5 has a full implementation of the system C specification. So anything that's written and compatible with system C, you can run that in the Gem5 simulator and then use things like TLM to communicate. So I don't have any slides on this, mostly because I'm not very familiar with this code. This is not something that I use personally. Um, and the person who wrote all this code, um, so there's no documentation on the system C integration. It is um, literally hundreds of thousands of lines of code with zero documentation. Um, but I will, so, so I will point you to the code. Um, it, uh, so it's in source system C, and it really is a full system C implementation. Um, we have the system C integration tests 
which again are an IEEE standard, um, integrated with this. Um, we don't run the tests externally, um, publicly, but I believe they're run internally at Google. Um, and most of the tests pass, although not all of them. And there are ways to configure this, which I wish I could tell you how to do it, um, but unfortunately, I think you're on your own trying to just read through the code and make guesses as to how to use it. Um, that said, if you have specific questions, I can try to answer them, as long as those specific questions aren't how do you use this. <laughs>